<laughs> he has great abs though. <laughs> we may only be a few games into the new season, but some players are already coming under pressure with some less than stellar performances on the pitch. Here, we look at a few of those players who, should they fail to turn their form around between now and Boxing Day, will be worried about how many new names are being added to their manager's Christmas wish list. He was told he wasn't wanted at Manchester City, had a pretty poor loan spell in Italy, and now can't stop shipping goals in East London. Having now lost his place in the England team, it's no surprise to see Joe Hart as our serial underperformer in between the sticks. His defence in front of him at West Ham aren't exactly helping the cause, but having conceded almost two goals a game this season, we are looking at yet another England keeper to become a ball boy for his own net. The first defender in this back three is a new signing for Stoke City, who despite some early promise at Tottenham Hotspur, has failed to live up to expectations. Kevin Vimmer didn't exactly have the games last season at White Hart Lane to get into his stride, but after a decent run in the Stoke side this season, he hasn't really justified the £15 million price tag. Football isn't played on paper as we know, but with a ratio of less than one tackle per game, things aren't reading too well for the Austrian. Next in the back three is probably the least known player on this list, and someone who'll have you asking, who is Steve Cook? Well, to keep it short and sweet, he's a 26-year-old defender who's been with Bournemouth from their League One days up to the present day in the Premier League. He has a match-winning goal against Liverpool last season to his name, but he's also played in the first four games of this season, culminating in four defeats. And to make matters worse, since being out of the side, Bournemouth have won and drawn in their last two fixtures. Our last man in the back line is one of those West Ham defenders who's been giving Joe Hart a lot more to do than he really should have. In the four games Angelo Ogbonna has played this season, the Hammers have lost all four, with his performances particularly less than impressive. Maybe it has something to do with that new lucrative five-year deal he signed in the summer. Now onto the midfield, where one of the biggest and most talked about transfers of the window has proved to be less than spectacular. Having turned down big money and bigger teams, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain chose to move to Anfield for playing time in his preferred position. But he's only started one game in the League Cup, and his other appearances off the bench have been really ineffectual. He may have potentially been bought as a replacement for Coutinho had his move to Barcelona gone through. But with the Brazilian back in the squad and firing, with Mo Salah's fine form and a return from injury soon for Adam Lallana, chances are looking pretty slim that Oxlade-Chamberlain will get his opportunities. We now come to a player that the Ox has left behind in the Arsenal midfield, and someone who, looking at his start to the season, probably wishes that he'd moved away from the Emirates as well. Having been one of Switzerland's top performers at the Euros last summer, Arsenal fans have been expecting more from someone who cost around £35 million, but to be honest, they're yet to see it. And should this form continue, Arsene Wenger may actually blow off the cobwebs from his wallet and fork out for a new midfielder. When serial relegation candidate Swansea signed one of Europe's brightest stars on loan from Bayern Munich, you would have thought that everything would have been fine and the Swans would have been gently gliding along Premier League waters. However, football isn't a perfect world and someone will inevitably end up in deep water. So with a string of poor performances from Renato Sanchez, it's becoming evidently clear to Swansea fans why Munich did in fact let him go in the first place. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. This next player is someone who must be absolutely infuriating to watch week in, week out, if you're an Arsenal fan. With the pace and skill to beat any defence, why is Theo Walcott still trying to kickstart his career in what is now his 12th year at Arsenal? He was the speedy youngster with great potential at one point, but there's only so many years without producing that the fans can take. Let's say he's best as a striker, while his 65 Premier League goals in 11 years looks embarrassing next to rival Harry Kane's record of reaching 65 goals in just under three seasons. OK, he's not a striker, he's a winger, I hear you say. Well, let's take a look at those 11 years and see that the 43 assists Theo has managed is almost being beaten by Meza Ozil, who has 42 in five years. In the left wing spot, we've got someone who, to be honest, isn't a left winger at all. Ronald Koeman should have watched Iceland play as he would have noticed that in the centre of the attacking midfield 
was none other than his new £45 million signing, Gilfie Sigurdsson, firing his nation to the World Cup next summer. Everton as a whole have been pretty poor this season, so the whole blame can't be placed on an out-of-position Sigurdsson. But I'm sure the Goodison Park faithful would have been expecting a better return than no goals or assists in the opening Premier League games. Now given this is a Premier League eleven of disappointing players, you'd be surprised to see that this next guy is the one and only Crystal Palace player. But to put the whole team in would have been a bit harsh. As a striker, you have one job, to stick the ball in the back of the net. Something which Christian Benteke hasn't done in his opening six games of the season. Next on the list is a potentially brilliant target man who just can't stay fit enough to get a decent run in the team. Because if he could, he may start to put some decent performances together and potentially push his way back into the England team. In all honesty, his rather unique style of play has led him to becoming more of a super sub or a plan B when things aren't going that well. Regardless of that, Andy Carroll still needs to find the net on a more regular basis if he is to reach the levels that we haven't really seen of him since his outrageous £35 million move to Liverpool almost seven years ago. So that's our 11 of players who have really disappointed this season. But that's not all due to the same factors. Some of them are being played out of position, some of them have too much competition, and some of them are in a pretty poor team. So our question, how do they turn it around? What would you do if you were in one of their positions? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. I just made that up on the spot. <laughs>